Hi, Todd Martin here. In this video, I'm going to examine different types of foot strike that are possible when we walk, and why only one of them is generally considered the correct way. I'm also going to demonstrate each variation with a close-up view of the feet so you can see the clear differences. The foot strike variations that I'm going to look at are heel strike, incorrect heel strike, forefoot strike, and midfoot strike. I'm not going to look at duck foot walking, which is a different issue and one that I've addressed in many other videos. Let's start with a slow motion view of the various types of foot strike or foot placement one might use. After that, we can examine the pros and the cons of each of the different foot strikes and also look at how humans have walked historically. When initial heel contact is done correctly, the heel places smoothly and rolls forward onto the flat of the foot. The body glides forward without pushing. At the mid-swing position, the rear heel is still down. The rear heel then elevates during the final phase until the forward heel touches down. There is still no pushing. This is also the point where the rear leg begins to lift off the ground, not push back against it. By the time the foot reaches the flat position, the rear leg is already separating from the ground. This is a very low impact and efficient way to walk. The rear hip is driving the heel into the ground at the end of each step. You can see the heel lift has already started by mid-swing, as the rear hip has already started to push. The rear hip is still pushing as the forward heel hits the ground with forward force and momentum. And it's still pushing when the foot reaches the flat position. This results in excessive force on the heel and incorrect weight distribution over the foot. It is this type of incorrect heel striking that leads many people to believe all heel striking is incorrect. With forefoot striking, we reach forward and place with the front of the foot and then retrograde the weight back to the heel. This is a low impact way of walking, but because we don't benefit from the forward roll, we actually use more energy using a forefoot walk than using the heel to toe walk. This extra energy makes forefoot walking inefficient. The inefficiency of forefoot walking compared to heel toe walking has been demonstrated in research studies. Forefoot walking also places the weight initially on the most vulnerable part of the foot, where the bones are small and relatively fragile, and there are a significant number of nerves traveling through the soft tissues, rather than the heel, which is very well fortified to place on any sort of hard surfaces. Midfoot striking is also a low impact, however, inefficient way of walking. The only way to midfoot strike without leaning forward and breaking your posture is to keep both knees flexed at all times. This reduces any maximal speed when walking and makes it inefficient for traveling. And also, just like forefoot walking, it places the foot initially with the weight on vulnerable soft tissue areas rather than on a sturdy heel.
Scientists know from footprints found preserved in the volcanic ash in Latoli, Tanzania, that ancient hominins practiced heel-toe walking as early as 3.6 million years ago. By landing on the heel of the leading foot and pushing off from the front of the trailing foot, humans dramatically decrease the cost of walking. It has also been demonstrated that using a heel strike at the beginning of stance allows the center of pressure to roll forward under the foot during stance phase, effectively increasing stride length and improving human walking economy. Although heel striking is energetically favorable for walking, the impact forces are substantially higher during running. To avoid these painful and damaging forces, barefoot humans tend to forefoot or midfoot strike when running. This causes some confusion as people extrapolate the mechanics of running technique to walking technique, although they are very different. <laughs>